All right, we are back. Couldn't you just add a number for each nonlinear export? Um, not sure what you mean. The problem, I'm not going to go into a big spiel about it because I've talked about it in previous stream, but the problem is if you do stuff like this, the right-hand side can, in C, it can only refer to stuff that's defined before it. So it can refer to other enum constants within the enum. <clears throat> it can refer to other, you know, let's say pound defines or size of types that have been completely defined and so on and so on. Um, so you can do this in C. In ION, you can do the same things, but now it has to work with out of order declarations. And the problem is that if you want to synthesize this whole thing, um, then there are restrictions on the ordering. I, I could reverse the order and, oh, I see what you mean. You just want me to renumber them in the order and just have explicit uh, indices rather than sequential indices on the C side. Yeah, I think that would work too. Maybe that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I should probably do that today, but I'll, I'll do it off stream, maybe, maybe tomorrow on my day off. Um, but yeah, so I think there's a few different ways I could get it to work. Um, that's a good idea, so maybe I'll do that. Um, all right, let's get back to Noir. So <clears throat> we have some of this basic stuff. Um, I think for now I will keep Windows out of the Noir struct. Uh, although I kind of like actually having Windows be part of that, to be honest. Um, but let's keep them external for now. And um, let's see what else we want to do next. Uh, yeah, let's maybe do... Actually, let's do text. So text is an interesting one. Because just because you can do key events doesn't mean you can do text. That text involves... You know, you knowing your your key map for your locale and stuff like that. So that's never something you want to be in the business of handling manually. <clears throat> STL does that for us. So, well, and, and Win32 does it for you as well. I mean, different operating systems typically do it for you. But we definitely don't want to synthesize that stuff ourselves from the low-level scan codes or virtual key codes. So, um, um, as with... Mu, my, my plan for this is basically you have a text buffer. Um, and uh, it's basically just a null terminated string. Uh, but it's, a, it's an inline buffer. So there's a limit to how much you can consume in one frame. But I mean, we can just make it large and generous and detect overflows. Uh, again, eventually there will be a full time serialized um, event queue in addition to this sort of splayed out stuff, but uh, for now I'm doing it this way. Actually, let's remove that. I don't think that serves the purpose, does it? Um, max text. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, so um, I think it's SDL char.
Okay, so they don't have a simple uh, like WM char type thing, it looks like. Um, I guess let's start by null terminating and beginning to reset it. Uh, we can use stircat. This is pretty unsafe to say the least. Um, I'm trying to remember what the stirring cat has issues, right? Uh, and seal. Stirring cat s is that in the is that actually in the standard now? I thought that was Windows only. So that's C eleven. I mean it's on Windows, so maybe I'll just use it. Um, bet the other platforms have it too. So that should be an issue. Um, Is this a buffer or a pointer? So I probably have to do this start text editing thing. That's not clear to me. I guess it's, yeah, if you're using IME or similar things, you only want to actually accept text input in specific situations like someone has a text field selected. Um, I think for us for now, um, oh, and it's window specific as well. Okay, let's be sloppy and just turn this on by default. Um, But it probably should be open for more than just the duration of my pumping stuff. I 
Okay, maybe I'll put it in create window. I should maybe do, no, because you don't, to work with text strings, you kind of want them not to be null, but, uh, so you, you can do this. It's nice to always have it be a null string if there's no new data. Okay, so you can see if I press really quick, I get multiple uh, multiple things in the same frame. I should make sure. So at least detect it with an assert for now or something if the buffer fills up. Try making this like two, which means you can hold one character plus a null terminator. So that works, but if I do Wait, what why would
Isn't the whole point of this to detect when the buffer is too small? Unless they mean they somehow detected this using the built-in compiler overrun checks. Actually, I guess is this not not terminated? I think they said this is not terminated. I guess this thing has to be minus one though. In any case, that can have been the error, but um, You know, even even though this is kind of what you it, it should be minus one, it wouldn't even matter because it's still going to do the null termination checking. This is just an upper bound on the number of characters it will read. So why is it saying that it's too small? Like, shouldn't it just return an error? What if I make it one bigger? So now it happens again. This is not what I expect the function to do. Actually, let's not even do that. Let's do stir cat. I don't think that was the issue. seems to be the issue. For stircat s, I'm supposed to pass the size of the buffer, not the number of characters. That makes it totally high. Oh, okay, there it is. Destination size. Um, that's a little surprising to me. Okay, sure. Hmm. 
Okay, yeah, so they're doing the Sterling trick, or that's because they don't know that you're supposed to pass the size, but I, I am passing the size. Right? Right, it's three, as it should be. This points to a null pointer, or it points to a null string. So first character is, is zero, it's an empty string. I guess I don't understand why it's why it's actually asserting. Does anyone know what's going on here? Like, I'm not using Sterlin or anything stupid like that. That's pretty basic. It must be some, some other stupid thing. Like, this buffer definitely has three characters. And I'm using the ASCII version. I guess, yeah. You know what? Let's not even... Screw this. Um, I'm not even going to use these functions. Um, There was there was no stir error. That's the point. It was asserting before returning anything. Um, okay. So if let's see here. Um, Well, actually, I could do it even, I could just do it character by character, which is fine, I think. Um,
Yeah. <laughs> it should so so that's definitely a bug because it's uh, I guess I wasn't breaking. Oh that's the problem. Right, so we're only getting some of the characters. Well, it's too long. Okay. Screw those built-in functions. Although that goes against my expectations. Um, but yeah, this is a good example of sticky errors. Right, there's some part of the update that finds an error. In this case, it can only report one error per frame, so th this has limitations. Um, it's and it's possible stuff like this should be a warning rather than an error or whatever. But um, you, you can elaborate on this as we need more fidelity for how error reporting works. But it's a convenient way to do it um, at the stage of development this is in currently. All right, so that's it for test test text input. Get it right. Um, let's do time. That one was useful. So, um, let's see what, I actually can't remember offhand what the SDL APIs for this is. So, get ticks, right? So, this is milliseconds. Isn't there some higher precision thing? Oh, this one, right? So for time, Um, I'm going to use the word text just to refer to the performance counter. Uh, so we want to have like current text uh, and start text, which is when the application started. Actually, let's not. Let's just have text for now. Uh, yeah, let's do start text too. Start text and then delta text. Um, those are a couple of useful things to get us started. So update time. Um, well, I think first off, uh, for initialization, you want to do um, start text SDL get performance counter. Text per second SDL get performance. Frequency. Um, and then when you update the time. You do more time uh, delta text is more time text minus text, more time text is more time text, something like that. Of 
very basic stuff. And uh, And that's pretty close to constant, although that's a very big number for a delta. Um, is that right? Oh no. Let's do something like this at least. I mean, that's just the other stuff should still be fine past the, the first frame. Um, but let's try to do a conversion by the frequency just so we can uh, uh, get something reasonable. So let's first add. Delta nanoseconds. Make these. Well, let's just make them like this for now. Uh, microseconds, milliseconds, and then actually seconds. So this is the authoritative version of all this stuff. And now for things like delta nanoseconds, um, you want to you want to take that delta. If you multiply it by uh, ticks per second, and then divide it by how many nanoseconds you have per second, so uh, is this right? This would give you milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds. So that's 18 milliseconds, I guess. If I eyeballed that right, so let's just redo the computation for uh, these other time scales. Do one seconds, which just means um, do this computation. Uh,
Oh, wait, sorry, this is not ion, so I cannot do that. Uh, I guess let's do milliseconds since we know what the frame should be roughly. Well, that's definitely not reasonable. Clearly, I must be doing something wrong. Delta ticks. Oh, it's the wrong direction. It was wrapping around. Makes a lot more sense. That's why it looked big, because it was negative. That's way too big. A factor of a lot. Um, Oh, sorry, no, it's the other way around, right? Um, I think I'm doing this wrong. This computation. Th these should clearly be bigger, so that doesn't make any sense. Uh, this math is totally bogus. So let's see. Uh, I'm just an idiot, sorry, guys. Don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, that's more in the ballpark. Um, yeah, so that sounds about right. It looks about right. Let's also try um, the float. Right order of magnitude. All right. Um, I guess we might as well do the other absolute numbers. Oh, interesting. I guess I forgot to add that to the, uh, the, the... The thing is, I know we already have support for doubles because I've been using double literals for my tests. I guess we just... Uh, or I forgot to, uh, to add this to the symbol table. All right. 
And the way I want to do, do these ticks, actually, now that I think about it, is I always want to measure them. Well, let's see how SDL measures them. I always like to make them be zero based. Um, so it measures, since the time base is kind of arbitrary, or not the time base, what's the word I'm looking for? The zero point is kind of arbitrary. I want to make it when you initialize. <clears throat> So let's always do this. Still works. Um, Probably both of these should be double. You're not supposed to use these. No. Delta sex is actually used all the time for simulation, so I don't want to accidentally get double arithmetic for that. But if you're using seconds, it's almost entirely in UI, and so the extra precision and potential cost is not an issue. Um, okay, that looks reasonable. Let me just comment that out. So yeah, that starts at zero and counts up. Um, okay. What do we want to add more than this? So we have the time stuff. We're mostly doing the low hanging fruit, but most of it is honestly low hanging fruit. Uh, yeah, let's do mouse input. Let's see what I what I put in my old new stuff for mouse. All right, left button, right button. So there's some stuff about. Um, okay, so on the ion side, we first off have right, left button, which is a digital button, right button, which is a digital button. And actually, speaking of, we were, I was mentioning earlier about moving stuff into C. Um, I mean, we should move something like this in.
Oh, what was it? This oh, it's still a mod. Let's just make sure this stuff still works. This is still happening in the background. Let's probably turn off that super fast scroll. Anyway, now that we have this, uh, we can use the steel button X. What do you mean too few arguments? There's two. This usually means that some of the things it's seeing are... Uh, oh, there's already this one. So we have to start. Um, and we also have to set All right, um, we 
to find out about mouse wheel stuff as well. Actually, I don't have mouse wheel here because it's a trackpad, so I guess I'll... But this is actually a good example of how we will use it for capture. Um, let's see here. So we're going to add these fields and you can read them like you can any other of these uh, struct fields but you can also write to it and then the next time you update um, it will t essentially synchronize the state of the OS to coincide with that so let me show you what that entails it's quite simple um, it's the following uh, when we're doing this stuff here Uh, we say if noir mouse captured well if these two are not the same then we have to synchronize the API to the new state and let me update this And um, so if you want to, I mean, let's first verify there's no mouse capture by default. So there's no mouse capture. I can move, you know, I can move my cursor out of the window. If you were doing something like an RTS with edge scrolling, this would be very bad. So uh, let's say when you press A, you toggle mouse capture. So uh, noir mouse captured is uh, is inverted. Okay, that. Didn't do what I expected. Let's see uh, if the thing actually executed. Oops. Maybe it's because it's the trackpad. Well, that doesn't make sense. Uh, let's try A again. It seems like it's always set to true. So maybe it's somehow getting reset. Oh, that's the issue. This thing was constantly resetting itself. Which is, it's the other way around. Still doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I'm forgetting how STL's mouse capture is supposed to work. Um, I guess I should check the return value.
and just remove all the spam. So presumably mouse capture is working because otherwise it's supposed to return another value. Um, <laughs> oh, this is for globally. I, I was thinking that, oh yeah, of course, it doesn't clamp to the window. That's a separate thing. All right, all right. I'm, I'm forgetting. I'm thinking of it in game terms. Most of the time when you do mouse capture in games, you have to actually do two things. You have to set capture, but you also have to clamp the cursor position to the edge of the window. So it really depends on which of those things you want to do. Um, and we could, in theory, do that ourselves. Oh yeah, let me also show how this input-output technique works for something like this. Um, So you have the previous position of the mouse. And the idea is, before updating that, if something has changed, it means that the user changed something about it, basically. Um, and so we're going to do if noir mouse pose is not equal to noir mouse previous pose, then um, set and that's not really uh, SDL set relative mouse state. Um, can't you set the cursor? Is that what warp is doing? Oh, here we go. It's incredible how bad it is at reporting useful errors. It doesn't say, oh, this name does not resolve to anything. It says, like, the left thing must be something, some other type. Very helpful. I'm still writing now or. <laughs> I think 
server. <laughs> okay, now it's getting out of hand. Um, But first, this is working. Um, let's do something really obnoxious, like first, let's remove this. And let's say when you do this, uh, you move the mouse position like that. <laughs> If you want to really make make your users hate you, this is a good technique. Uh, it will only do it when you're in focus, which is why when the cursor disappears from the window, you're no longer allowed to do it. I think that's actually a window security feature. They have weird stuff about window focus. Uh, it could all, well, maybe I guess it's still in focus, but it's not hover. Um, all right. Actually, let, let's do something fun here. Um, so in one second, let's say a thousand. Um, I guess this would be minus. And this should be plus. And then the same thing for y. So down. And up. Uh, sex. This is surprising. So I'm trying to hold down the mouse keys and weird stuff is happening, but let's see what might be the reason. Um, first up, we're doing X definitely. I mean, this is maybe not enough. Down, 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 down. I guess if it's less than a millisecond, this would work. But this seems like it's going to be too much, though, since we don't have fractional state for the cursor. Okay, so that's a little bit better. I think the reason it was jittery is just because um, we we can only move by pixels basically but i don't understand why well the other side of it is just that the coordinate system is inverted for y which is just the way screen coordinates work but this makes no sense so one direction down is slow and the other one's fast
so left key No, no, why, why is inverted? But that's not, I mean, the, the logic should be the same in either case. Yeah, let's, I wonder if I did something weird with left, right, down, up. Left, right, up, down. What about over here? Could it be something about warping? It seems unlikely though. Okay, let me, rather than doing it based on time, let me just make it edge triggered and just say like 100, 100 units each time. Okay, so that works. Actually, I have an idea of what it is. Maybe if it moves out of the screen in one go, yeah, I don't know, anyway. So this works, at least. Let's just leave it like that for now. Um, I think if I enable mouse capture, I should maybe be able to use it even when it's, uh, off the, the window. Anyway. Anyway, the mouse work, the mouse warping uh, works, and the thing you can do if you wanted to do this sort of edge capture is to basically use this kind of functionality to clamp to the sides of the window when someone tries to move off. But uh, I think that's oh, I can actually do it globally. Okay, so maybe that's something we can add to. Um,
Okay, here we go. Freedom. You have to go out of the window, but you can still use the other API. Um, let's not do that right now. That requires a reverse mapping from SDL windows to our own windows. Um, where would they put these lines? These lines down here, since they're kind of for delta. Um, Let's just use this prev prefix for everything just to be consistent. Okay, I think that's it. Well, no, we want relative motion as well, right? Now that I think about it. Why didn't they say that was a different form of interaction? Did I? Oh, right. Of course. That's where my point is.
Um, oh, sorry. That's not what I wanted to do. So yeah, this is a, another example of the kind of thing where having that data just kind of pre-computed means that you don't have to do it. Um, and so, I mean, you, you can even do stuff like, Um, let's move on from now stuff. Um, let's look at you here. Gamepad, maybe. Oh, I did have delta position wrong. I forgot about that. Yeah, let's not do wheel. I don't have a way to test it currently anyway. Uh, position size for windows. You know what? Let's uh, for now. Let's say that there's only one master window, and we can expand it later. Um, and that is owned by uh, Noir itself. Um, So all of this is going away. Is 
can still use this, but it's basically going to be, well, no reason to make it a static, but it's it's only for our own purposes. Uh, let's just mark it static to make that explicit. Because of that, we should probably move it further down, closer to where it's used. So it's going to be used in init. Um, which I, I don't know how useful this is as a function nowadays because. We're going to basically be driving it from different information. Um, so let's say just call it init window. And so let's see. Uh, if we don't have a title, then we set the title again. The watch for it as defaults, have defaults for everything. Um, if there's no position, then actually, let's do it this way. Um, by default, these will be things that are set. But if both of, if both of them are zero, then um, we'll just assume they're centered. Title X Y and we'll do something similar for uh for width and height. Yeah, so we want to write it, let's see here. Hmm. 
Right, we haven't written that yet. Um, so update window. So we should probably, yeah, so anyway, SDL get window position, noir window, SDL window, um, was the function parameters really imps? I think they were. Um, Okay, let's just say that's it for the basic update for now. But the point is we want to call this right after this update because if we, for example, set the these centered values, these are not actual true position values. These are just sentinels. And so we need to actually create the window in order to get the right values. Um, right, and we don't have these. And we're going to define those on the ion side. So... Um, Okay, so we still have a window, and now it's using a default title, and it's getting centered by default. Um, we want to also add one like this. And we also want to add some of these prev things to track changes. Uh, from the user. Sorry, if that's one that was outside. Um, move to the scientist command. And so, so, update window currently just gets this info. Um, I don't think delta pose is too useful, but uh, you can certainly do more window 
moved. Yeah. Yeah. This is unequal to x, or this is unequal to y. And So right now there's nothing. Now we're getting window move events. And I don't know if this is resizable. I guess it isn't unless we pass an explicit flag. Um, I don't know if we want to make it resizable by default. Um, let's make it not resizable by re default. Um, and then we're going to right. Um, just to make it sort of show that it's dynamic. Well, actually, let's first, uh, if we say noir window resizable true, uh, well, actually, let's first disable it and just sort of do a before and after. Um, but right now, there's no resize handles on the, cor on the sides of the window. Um, so let's see if you can do that now. Right, so you can resize it and you get resize events. Um, let's also do there should be a way to update these flags after the fact. Like this one. So let's also do synchronization after the fact. Like you can change the resizability at runtime by playing with that flag. Um, which we will do by
so let's say that when you press R for, for resizable, um, you toggle the resizability. Let's remove, let's set it back to non resizable by default. Verify that it's not resizable. Now press R. It says it's resizable, and indeed it is. Now I press R again, and it's no longer resizable. All right. So you, I think you can kind of see the pattern for this general API design approach, which is about state synchronization between your model and the, the reality of the operating system in a way that's bi-directional. So you can read out what, what the operating system state is. And for something like a window, right, like the application can manipulate the window, the size and the position, but so can the user and the OS uh, uh, autonomously. And so you kind of need both, both directions. Um, all right. Um, probably not going to do all the different window flags, but I do want to do position and velocity the same way, or not velocity. <laughs> it's, uh, auto-completing when I say position and um, position size. So just like I'm handling this here, I want to do the same thing there um, for size and position. Okay, I already put these in, I forgot about that. So um, If more window posts x is not equal to more window read posts x or the y is not equal to this y, then more window read posts x equal to posts and SDL set window position more window SDL window. I think in order to prevent thrashing, we actually want to set this down here unconditionally, which is fine. I mean, the same could be said for all of these. There's no reason to only set them in here. You might as well just do it unconditionally. Um, What we're doing so right we're doing it this for that and then we want to do something similar for um, for size Uh, and then to test it, let's let's do something uh, kind of fun. So right now we have uh, right now we have the arrow keys for moving around like this. Let's do some modifier keys. So if you use the arrow keys with different modifiers, you will actually move the window or resize it. Um, so you will say if keys key shift down and we will do something else um, 
And so in this case, it will just be Actually, let's do something really dirty. Uh, let's say we have this is an int pointer. And the way you do this is you say dest x, dest x minus. Then let's say by default it's noir. Let's just verify the old stuff works. So the old thing was noir mouse position. Oh, no, it's just one of them. Actually, it, it can be in two now that I think about it. So by default, let's say this is just window or mouse position. Cannot deref non pointer type. Oh, I can actually just do this. Now that it's a struct unresolved name. Look how nice my compiler is with error messages. Better than MSVC already, despite not even trying. <clears throat> All right, so this still works. Um, now let's just try making that uh, window position instead. Same data type, right? One of the benefits of having consistent data types. So now I can move the window. Note, by the way, how having consistent types and you know being able to use, I mean, this is kind of obvious beginner stuff, but still the fact that you can just switch out a pointer and it's now moving a totally different kind of entity because even though the APIs in the back end are different, there's a uniform set of data types that drive it and it's all based on state synchronization rather than having these piecemeal API calls. Um, so maybe you're starting to see why this organization for APIs is quite a bit better than the standard one for many cases. Uh, and we can also do the same for size. Yeah, that works too. So that's pretty neat, I think. I'll just, um, yeah, so let's say the default is you move this. Um, if noir keys, uh, key shift, this down, then you use this. Otherwise, if control is down, then you use this. Otherwise, as a fallback, you use this. So by default, you move the window. If you use shift, you use the mouse. Or if you use control, you resize the window. So this is actually not the right default. Do this. So move the window. I now hold shift. I'm now moving the cursor instead. Release shift. I'm back to moving this. I hold control. I'm now resizing it. 
Um. It's starting to feel hungry. Maybe this is a good place to stop. Let me just see if there's any other things I should do for Windows. I mean, we could do a few others, right? Like, um, let's put all the flags up, up top here. Uh, and note, by the way, I'm putting all the, def this is not coincidental. Whatever the default thing I want to be should be zero. So zero initialization works correctly. You know. um, not an accident. Do, do, do this always in C and always in ION. Try, try to really go to, you know, even if you have to use sort of negative adjectives, try to uh, always have the zero value be a good, be the correct default value. Um, okay, this belongs in the paragraph. If noir window hidden, it's not equal to previous hidden. still visible. Now let's add a key that hides it. So if you press, uh, if you press H, we will toggle visibility. So visible by default, press H. Now we don't have window focus, unfortunately. Which <laughs> is not so great. Uh, so that, that's a one-way ticket right now, unless we take another approach. But anyway. Uh, at least it works to hide it, so let's just put that in like that. Someone wants window and cursor gravity. I think that's a little much, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I we might. It's a demo at some point. Um, let's see, is there anything else? I think this is pretty good. Obviously, there's things like you know whether it's maximizable and minimizable, and actually doing that. Um, but I think that is enough for the for this first stream on Noir. So. Um, I didn't really explain a whole lot, maybe less than usual. I was just kind of trying to get API stuff to work. Um, if you haven't seen this style of platform API before, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of why it's like way better than, in my opinion, way better than all the other styles. Like, look how nice it is to just write this code. It reads like prose. You don't have to call functions. You don't really have to do any work. It just sort of is right there at, the finger, at your fingertips. 
uniform data representation, even if the API side is totally non-uniform, stuff like that. Um, if, if you want to see more, there's like six, at least six hours of video from my old stream, although most of it is just Win32 head bashing. Um, but uh, if you're desperate to look at more of this stuff, look at the code, look at the old videos. Um, but we'll probably be revisiting this. Like I'll probably be working on this at least for next stream as well. Uh, hopefully at that point, it'll be more exciting with maybe OpenGL and audio and other stuff. But uh, for now, this is pretty cool, I think. All right. Uh, thanks for hanging out. That was a pretty long stream session today. So I hope people enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.